Uh, hello there, Kevin. Hey, how are you? I just watched. I'm I'm doing good because I just watched Twenty Two Versus Earth, <laughs> and what a delightful little prequel romp that was. Nice. What a joy! So thank you for that. Thank you. Um, so. You know, tell me what it's like at the at the. I don't know if that's if this is the right term, but like the Pixar factory. Do they go up to you and they're like, <laughs> "We need a prequel short film for you know right now," and you're like, "I'm on it, sir." Or do you pitch it, <laughs> or do you go? You know, what's the process like? Uh, for me, the process was a little bit different, but um, <clears throat> so these this kind of short attached to a feature we've traditionally traditionally done, and we used to do it for the DVD. It was almost like a DVD bonus you know, featurette. And um, the tradition continues into the Dis Disney Plus era with some movies. If we come up with a good idea, then we'll do one. And if it works out with the production schedule. And so I was really busy on Soul still, actually, when the initial ideas were pitched, you know, the story department pitched a bunch of ideas to Pete. And uh, sometime in February or March, it started to gain traction. And traditionally, this would go to the head of story on the show, on the feature. Uh, but in this case, Kristen Lester had just directed her great short Pearl, and she was off in development already developing something. And so I just happened to be in the room, actually, when the conversation happened. And it fell into my lap, so to speak. And so this is your first like official, you know, N uh, credit on the IMDb of director's credit for Pixar for you, right? Right, exactly. Um, was it, you know, is this something that you've always been waiting to do? Were you like banging on the door being like, hey, I've been here since Finding Nemo, come on. <laughs> or, or are you just like, you know, oh, you know, if it comes my way, it comes my way. I'm just going to go uh, just keep swimming, so to speak. Uh, yeah, it's somewhere in between. I, I love, you know, I've directed these little informal things on the side, live action and just with friends, no budget. And so it's always been on my mind, but it's not something I've been, you know, I've been very busy editing and I love editing. And it, I always thought if the right thing came up and this was just sort of perfect, you know, I'm, I'm still working on Soul. I've now had, you know, 15 years watching one of the greatest animation directors work, watching him close hand and just through osmosis absorbing what it takes to do it. So the timing worked out perfectly and the subject matter, I'm, you know, I'm a fully cynical person like 22. So everything, you know, it's just a lucky break. It all fell into place. <laughs> are you, you know, do you, have you been bitten by the bug? Are you like, are you in now? Are you like, all right, feature time, <laughs> let's go. Or is that, or am I putting the uh, cart in front of the horse? Uh, a little bit of the cart in front of the horse. It's a long process. The <laughs> feature process at Pixar is, you know, very long and I'm, you know, I'm not young anymore. And um, I, I love directing, I love directing shorts, personally. And so maybe that works out. But I'm also happy editing. Um, I'm happy at this point in my career to, you know, Pixar is, we're getting younger voices, more diverse voices, and I'm happy to step back and, you know, help where I can and just let the next generation sort of take over. Sure. Tell me about about playing in this specific soul sandbox and having you know the keys to make the decisions, which I suppose you do you know as an editor to a certain extent, but when it's you know when it's beforehand as well. Yeah, right. Um, yeah, like I get it, it's pretty much an extension of what I do. You know, I'm heavily involved in the process from story right through the final mix. So I. Like I said, I, I was deeply involved in soul from that respect. Um, the nice thing about this short was the, we had a lot of, as we were making soul, we had a lot of conversations about where 22 came from, what made her who she was. And we were always joking about it or had, you know, coming up with funny little ideas. And so I had all of that in my brain when this thing started, so. Sure. And I have a, just a, a curiosity. Maybe everyone knows this except for me. But um, <laughs> when you're directing, you know, animation, do you, you oversee the voices as well? Like, you know, do you meet with Tina and you're like, all right, yeah, take whatever, you know, yeah. or is that a separate division in Pixar? No, the, I don't know. the director, um, yeah, the director directs the, the voice talent also. 
And again, I've had well, this because oh, yeah. I go to the recording sessions with Pete on the features. So I know the players, I, I'm just in the room. So I've seen over and over how Pete directs hmm. you know, actors. How long have you known Pete? How far back do you two go? Uh, we started working together. I started at Pixar in 2000. And the first time we worked together was in the development days of Up. So 2003 or 2004, I guess that was. Um. Oh boy, in a, in another in a different uh, context, I would love to just pick your brain and get all those secrets. I want to know all about the the Newt movie, but that's a whole other thing. Yeah, I, I'll I, never find I, out. <laughs> no one ever will. Well, <laughs> um, thanks for indulging me on that. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, tell me about um, you know so, so when you are directing you know someone like Tina you know d you know because she's you know just a super famous hilarious comedian yeah. you know does does she like you know stray from the script and are you like oh come on give me give me one my way or um or do you just play no i mean with her i mean again my luck is she's so great to work with and so you know she does she starts off with the script definitely and she gives everything she can to that and if she has an idea to add lib she does it if she doesn't she doesn't force it and now she's a total pro and just so you know just so nice so i couldn't have had it easier and all of our actors you know alicia braga is just just so pleasant so pleasant to work with so so you started working on this back um in, you said february so it's 2020 yes um tell me does like you know when you're coming up with the ideas and working on it for for the short do you ever go, oh, we can kind of plant a seed for that in the feature? And does the feature ever uh, get influenced by the short? Uh, I don't know if it ever has. In this case, definitely not, because we started the short, we were already halfway through animation on the feature, so. Tell me with, with um, you know, just with, with this world and you have the established, um, you know, aesthetic of soul. Yeah. Um, do you, are you you know under strict you know orders to play strictly within that or you know tell me about about when you get to to open it up a little more and look beyond what we see in the the, the feature uh the nice thing actually about doing something like this is you are you're limited you're limited to the sets and the characters at hand you know you're not going to go out we just don't have the time and resources to go out and mm. build any new things so that gives you all your focus and it's on the story and the characters. And obviously I'm gonna be true to the movie and the world, but you do, it's a great limitation to have actually, is to just push the character as far as you can within the, con, you know, within the reality of the feature. I'm, I'm thinking now, and maybe this isn't quite the same. I, I think that in animation, a really overlooked part of the process is just that, uh, asset production yes. of just creating all of these models and maybe I'm, I'm off base but when you're making you know like a sequel prequel especially a short like this is it like getting a sandbox full of toys or a toy box full of toys <laughs> and um and being like well here are all the toys that we made you want to do something with it yeah. Is that is that how it is? Uh, it is and it isn't. Uh, it depends on the set entirely. Um, in the case of this, the it's the the soul world looks so beautiful and so soft and so that is incredibly hard to do technically. And it mm -hmm. turned out, and I don't know these things. I'm like in my world, my editing world. This is a this is a part of the uh, process that I'm totally ignorant of. Um, but I discovered like there was an airplane on the set and I said, it'd be cool to have that sort of fly through. I wanted to do this little apocalypse now and thing or a helicopter and see, <laughs> see it come into frame, you know? And they explained to me the complexity of shading and lighting, everything in that hall of everything was so complex. It would have taken so much time. It would have eaten up most of my, you know, my set hours <laughs> just to do this one shot. So, you know, there's surprises like that. Sure. Well, it is 
such a delight. It is so much fun. The, the, it's gorgeous to look at, of course. You know, you don't need me to tell you that. <laughs> and all of those, those little characters, Peanut, Peanut, <laughs> Peanut is close to my heart. <laughs> um, so just thank you so much. Um, you know, I have so much respect for what editors do. And I love you. To see you creating this, you know, I mean, especially, you know, when this is up on the site, I'm going to sound like I know what I'm talking about, thanks to my editor. <laughs> Um, Thank you so much. And whatever you do next, I'm going to be there. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs>